What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Hot Take. Today, we are in a 1998 Lexus GS400. This has the 1UZ V8, making 300 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque, rear-wheel drive paired with this five-speed automatic transmission. We have the owner, Chris, with us today. Hello. Substitute Topher. If you guys watch them over there, you want to tell us a little bit about this car? Give us like a brief rundown. Yeah, so I bought it a few months ago from Copart. It had some minor front end damage. Uh, put a new bumper, hood, and some chrome wheels from a GS300, and some Bridgestone Blizzaks, and have just been driving it ever since. Perfect winter day, awesome. daily rear wheel drive, comfortable. It's got all the luxury <laughs> car amenities you could ever want. Yep. Let's go ahead, take it on the road, and see how she drives. Oh, those are so cool. Yep. The the arrows. So some initial impressions. It's got really good torque. Mm -hmm. This transmission is also butter smooth. How fast do you take this? You're good. Oh, all right. This speed. And yeah. Obviously, you'll go left here. This is the only option. The only yeah, we, option. we don't want to go right here. Oh, if I'd been there a little sooner. Yeah, that's all right. Ride quality is really good. Everything in this car is really comfortable, very supple. The transmission, oh, it is so slick. Like gear changes don't feel like anything. You only know they're happening because it has an exhaust leak and you hear it. <laughs> but also, uh, because you, I'm looking at the tack. <laughs> wow. So you've been, what have you made of this car daily driving at? Um, it's been great, you know, I was, a little bit surprised by kind of the sporty nature. I mean, like you said, it is still cozy and squishy, um, but Lexus was set out to compete with the E39 5 Series yeah. in this era. It'll go right at the light. Um, so, you know, they had to have, with the GS400, a little bit of a sporting factor. Yeah, it turns so in really nicely. The steering feel is heavier than I expected. Um, it is. But it's been a great daily, you know? It gets like it gets like 23 mpg on the highway um the seats are cozy for a it's what was this four liter v8 four liter yeah yeah not bad but it's been good other than the door locks not working and i have locked my keys in at once so oh that's no the thing, but. yeah the steering feel it's heavy it doesn't have a lot of feedback but i think pretty standard for a luxury car like this maybe a little less than the e39 but probably more than a mercedes i would say yeah, it splits the difference. Yeah, it kind of splits the difference nicely. Brakes have good bite when you get into them. Yeah, I went with a, the entire front brakes are new. Calipers, rotors, pads. Oh, everything. Uh, yeah. Everything's new. So when I bought it, they were screwed. Wow. Yeah. That's got good torque and a great sound. Yeah. So get in the left lane. Um, you'll take, there's like a swooping left-hand corner. Yeah. And uh, we have drive modes in this car. Yeah. So, so if you go into power, there's like a little toggle switch. You push that forward. So that's yeah. ECT power, electronically controlled transmission. All right. So it'll hold gears a little bit longer. Yeah. And, uh, a little sportier. Yeah. So this left? Yep. So you go left. All right. Just keep in mind that you're on Blizz X. So yeah. So <laughs> yeah, we're not a, not a cornering king here. Yeah. So that's my manual that's mode. That's your manual mode, and you can downshift with the steering wheel. Oh, and I get a little gear indicator there. So there's three. Let's try two. Oh, it kind of has that old automatic still. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, You're good. Oh, we're good. I didn't go far right lane, but you can punch it out here. Shifts quickly, too. It does. You go right. Wow. Yeah, I hit the wrong one. I got to yeah, use okay. that. It won't, it won't downshift if, yeah. it's, if it's revved too high. Oh. <laughs> no. Yeah, there's, there's a technique to all of these old transmissions. They all have, like, a... Wow. So, yeah, it's kind of neat. Fun little gimmick mode. Honestly, yeah. though, in automatic mode, in power and automatic, it, it kind of just does what you want it to do. Yeah. Interesting. Wow, this is uh, this is fun. Yeah. I'm guessing I'll flip around here. You'll go, actually, you'll go right at the blinking yellow. Okay, right at the blinking yellow. And then, if you want to, like, stop and do an acceleration, this is a good road to do that on. Perfect. On it. Yeah, so we'll put it back into D, but we're still in sport. Yep, still in ECT power. 
again with some front end plow yeah but you know expect it. I'm blown away by how smooth these shifts are you my Camry smooth the granite it does need engine mounts so it is like it's a little like you kind of have to it's a trick but this it's like nothing every old automatic kind of has the moment where it goes like in it hangs out and it goes down yeah. this doesn't and even it's funny that your exhaust like you actually hear what's happening yeah it almost has like that little fart noise that you hear yes. with DCT yes I, okay, when I got this car, I was so excited. I, I did an acceleration right in that same spot yeah. that you just did. And I was like, oh my god, it does like... Oh, sorry, I'll go left here. Ooh. Brake test. Brake. Um, <laughs> I'm bad at giving directions. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, it does like this the, the ZF yeah. speed fart. Yeah. Here? Yep. And then you'll get in the left lane and you'll merge onto the highway. Alright. Actually, you might be able to make this. Go left at the green, you'll get a good entrance ramp. Oh, yeah. not today, guy in the Camry. <laughs> Probably third. And then once you merge, just stay. Like the merge lane turns into a lane, just stay in that lane because you'll get right back off. Yeah. This is a lot of fun! I know! It's a <laughs> This thing's awesome, dude! Wow! <laughs> I'm jealous! <laughs> I want to daily drive this thing, dude! <laughs> wow! Yeah, it like, it's, for a luxury car from this era, this car is no f right being as fun as it is. I know, yeah, so I had a GS300 when I was like your age in college. Yeah, and but you couldn't really afford the big Mac Daddy. Yeah, I couldn't quite afford it, a 400. Yeah. My GS300 was like three grand, it was great. Um, and that car was fantastic, and when this popped up, I was like, I'm going to relive my youth, but with a V8 motor. You're relive what you so, wanted your youth to be. Exactly. V8 motor. V8 motor. motor. <laughs> wow. This is low mileage too. Yeah, 116. When I bought it, it had like 116.2, so I put like 500 miles on it or so. Yeah, this thing's perfect. I do a lot of commuting to like Cincinnati from Michigan, and yeah. this would be like a perfect highway car. Yeah, it's nice on the highway to jump in the middle lane here. Alright. Are the mirrors tinted? Uh, that's just how they come, because they're, they're auto dimming. So, Ooh. Uh, it's the same with this mirror. Yeah, turn interesting. That on and off. Oh, interesting. Well, it's not going to do it now. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, uh, That's cool. Wow. This thing's cool. Yeah. <laughs> There's just so much going on. I'd like this car a lot, actually. It's cool. You know, this, this was like the golden era for Lexus. They were making a lot of cool stuff during this time. Um, the LS400, the LX470. Um, a couple years later, the IS300 debuted. It's just like a really solid... Nice era. Like these are starting to become collector cars now. Um, oh, this thing's great, though. I'm uh, I wasn't really sure what to expect when coming to drive this car. This was the fastest car in 1998, I think, by top speed. Fastest sedan. Or sedan. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, not, not car. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fastest sedan by top speed. And I expected, I expected it to be like really slushy and kind of just, I don't know. Yeah. Like, not great, you know? Like, they made, just made a car for top speed, and that was it. Right. But everything's good. These buttons are actually intuitive. I mean, this is kind of like the first of its kind. Yeah, super early. Super early on. Um, yeah, it's great. It's got, like, kind of a... Kind of like a sporting sort of... I don't want to say pedigree. It's definitely a sports sedan. Yeah, I would... Yeah, I'd call this a sports sedan. So now we finished our test drive of the Lexus GS400. My hot take, uh, it is unexpectedly sporty. That, I think that's that's how I describe this car, unexpectedly yeah. sporty. You look at it, it looks like a Mercedes. They even, they stole the front end. Well, stole. Yeah, it does have Mercedes headlights, kind of. Yeah, style. all the Japanese cars were doing that from this era, because <laughs> that's who they were trying to beat. Right. Uh, but it, 
it's kind of like it blends the difference be- between like a BMW and Mercedes as far as sportiness. The transmission is so serene. I like, I've never felt a transmission that is as smooth as this. You don't feel the shifts at all. I don't know what wizardry they did with the motor mounts and the shift points, but it feels amazing. And these buttons are also really cool. And it kind of shows that like they, they put, they cared. They put the work in when they made this car to make it a real competitor to all the, the Euro brands that Lexus was trying to beat and did beat, honestly. Yeah, and I mean, you look at a Mercedes or a BMW from this era, they don't really hold up as well as these. No. In the long run, so. Other than all the, the little ring marks. Uh, I know, yeah, somebody, <laughs> somebody was a being married enthusiast. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly, being married enthusiast. Yeah, it was sporty, it was good, overall, great experience. So with that, let's go ahead and give it a score. The score is as shown. The GS400 ties with the D2 Audi S8. The D2 S8 is a lot more car and more special, but the GS400 is going to be easier to live with. Overall, it sits about where I expected it to. Should you buy it? The Lexus GS400 was great by late 90s standards, and even holds up well today with a lot of little features and attention to detail a lot of modern cars lack. However, everyone knows they are great, so it carries a hefty price tag. To get a GS400 at this mileage with a clean title and in good condition, you will spend about $10,000, which is a lot for a 25-year-old luxury sedan. Granted, most of them have 300,000 miles by now and have lived their life, so good luck finding one remotely close to 100,000 miles. Toyota overbuilt these back in the 90s because they knew they had a hard task ahead of them if they wanted to beat the German brands. I think they were successful. No other luxury sedan from this era, 25 years later, still feels as smooth and as slick as it ever did. You could get a V12 Mercedes or BMW for that same $10,000, or frankly even less, but at what cost over your next two years of ownership? $10,000 may be a lot, but if you have that classic luxury sedan itch, the GS400 lives up to the Lexus name and carries the Toyota reliability.